It's said that evil haunts Christiansburg, Virginia in the form of the ghosts of three sisters dressed in black, bringing death and destruction trailing behind. You're listening to Mountain Lore, Tales from Appalachia. Goodness, what? Yeah, you like a good witch story? Mm, yeah, this sounds... Witchy? Well, worse than witchy. <laughs> Guess what? What? A lot of it's true. Oh, really? Yeah, it's oh. kind of like this bit of history mm-hmm. with a whole lot of folklore attached to it, too. Okay. We call that embellishment? Maybe. Yeah, not on our part, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can okay. say that. Well, I'm ready to hear this one. All right. Well, it all starts with one of the sisters whose name was Virginia Wardlaw. Now, she was named president of Soul College in Murfreesboro, Tennessee in 1892. Now, Gina, Soul College was a school dedicated to the education of Southern women in both practical and liberal studies. For example, they would learn housekeeping, cooking, Mm -hmm. cleaning, as Mm -hmm. well as literature, art, and science. Mm -hmm. She soon hired her sister, Mary Wardlow Sneed, to help her run the school. And before long, the two had brought order, discipline, and honor to the institution. Mm -hmm. The college did quite well, achieving recognition for the quality of the education given to the ladies who attended. Things were going well, and before long, the sisters brought in their other sister, Caroline Wardlow Morton, who moved to Murfreesboro with her daughter, Oceana, known as Osi. Mm. And that's a pretty name, I think. Yeah. By 1903, the sisters had bought Seoul College. Oh. And that's when things began to change. Mm. You see, Caroline had issues, as they'd say now. Mm -hmm. In an interview in the 1930s, Mary revealed that Caroline and her daughter were taken in by her sisters because she was um, insane, that Caroline had had nowhere else to go. Oh. And this insanity may have led to the stories that soon arose about the three sisters. Hmm. You see, they were reported to have been regularly seen hiring a driver to drive them all dressed in black and mourning veils, down to the Evergreen Cemetery there in Murfreesboro at night. Hmm. There they would chant incantations in an unknown language and dance around people's graves. Oh. Entirely normal conduct. Uh Uh-huh. Not. Sure. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Soon folks began to whisper about the women, calling them child murderers, even accusing them of murdering their father for the insurance money. Hmm. These rumors spread like wildfire through Murfreesboro, and before long, students grew fearful of the three sisters, enough so that many of them began to withdraw from the school, as you quite Mm. understand. Yeah. It's also said that Caroline had been taking money from the school for her own personal use, something that, um, well, certainly didn't help Soul College's finances, you understand. Mm -hmm. By 1904, the sisters left Soul College in ruins, and moved on to Christiansburg, Virginia, and the Montgomery Female College, a school that had been owned by their aunt, who had given the school to their elderly mother, who in turn brought the women in to run the place. Hmm. Never let your kids take care of your business. Never. Nope. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) While in Christiansburg, the same odd stories about the sisters began to spread, you know, with them dressing in heavy black clothing and riding to the local cemetery, Sunset Cemetery, to perform odd and, many said, satanic rituals there. Mm -hmm. To this day, folks report seeing the three sisters, all dressed in black, still gathering in that cemetery. Ooh. Wow. There were stories about a haunted well, which was located where a gym from a school built after this school for girls was built. Mm Mm-hmm. That well is the source of the screams of a young woman and or the cries of a murdered infant. Oh. And we'll tell more about that here in just a minute. Oh. Students reported seeing dark apparitions flitting by doors or down hallways. Those ghosts are reported to be the blackest color of anything ever seen. Hmm. Doors would be opened and closed by invisible hands. 
and lights would be turned on and off day and night. By 1908, the three had run Montgomery Female College into the ground just as they'd done with Seoul College, and they left for New Jersey, along with Osi and her husband, who just happened to be her first cousin and her Aunt Mary's son. Let's just keep it in the family. Yep. <laughs> Not only had they left a ruined college behind them, this time they left behind some legal questions. Hmm. You see, Caroline's husband, Mary's other son, John, and John's wife had all died under mysterious circumstances. Oh. John, for example, had had two near-fatal accidents, one falling from a train and the other almost drowning in a well before hmm. he finally died by, what would you think got him? I was thinking poison. No, no, no. no. Burned alive in his bed. Oh, my. The sisters collected insurance money for his death, although many report smelling the distinct odor of kerosene in the house shortly after his death. Oh, imagine that. People reported seeing the sisters dancing around the graves of John and his wife late one night in the Sunset Cemetery. Hmm. Things didn't change in New Jersey. On the night of November 29th, 1909, the police received a call requesting a coroner be sent to the sisters' residence. Lacking a coroner that was available, the police sent out a local doctor, Dr. Herbert Simmons, to go check the uh, incident that was going on. Mm -hmm. What he found was Osi, dead in the bathtub from drowning, with a suicide note near her. Okay. Virginia Wardlaw had answered the door and let the doctor in. She was dressed, you guessed it, all in heavy black clothing, heavily veiled. Mm -hmm. The doctor was suspicious about Osi's death. For one thing, upon examination of the body, he knew she'd been dead at least a day. <gasps> Not more recently, as Virginia claimed, I would assume rigor mortis must have set in. Oh. The fact that Virginia refused to cooperate with the doctor also raised a red flag. Mm -hmm. An investigation revealed that the sisters had life insurance on O.C. in the amount of $32,000. Uh, yeah. That's 1909 oh. 2023, that's over a million dollars. Oh, O.C. also had been deprived of food and other necessities so that the sisters could pay her life insurance premium, thus causing her to starve to death. Oh, my goodness. Not only that, but O.C. had inherited some valuable real estate from her father, Caroline's late husband. Turns out that the sisters had tried to get her to turn that real estate over to either them or to their own mother unsuccessfully. Mm. The three sisters, Gina, were arrested and put in jail. Virginia stopped eating, died from starvation while awaiting trial. Mary Sneed was acquitted, and Caroline pleaded guilty to manslaughter, thinking she'd be set free. Mm -hmm. But Gina, when she was instead sentenced to seven years in prison, she pretty much lost her mind in the courtroom, screaming, I don't deserve it. Uh huh. She was carried off to prison in her chair. Then from there, she was transferred to an insane asylum, where she, like her sister Virginia, starved herself to death. Hmm. Now, there are still tales of the three sisters told in the Christiansburg area, many involving Osi and an illegitimate baby she had, which was said to have been drowned in that well we talked about earlier, you know, hmm. along with Osi, both of them crying and screaming as they went down. Hmm. Over the years, folks there reported seeing the three sisters all dressed in black and appearing like jet black demonic apparitions in the halls of both Montgomery Hall and the school that was built on its ruins, the Christiansburg Middle School. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I would assume that the middle schoolers probably thought that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, oh maybe. But <laughs> maybe not. Just seeing three old. Yeah. Witches, I guess you'd call them, or ghost witches or whatever. That's some bad people. Um, bad. Yeah, bad enough that they've got folklore made about them. That's how <laughs> bad they were. Yeah. Now, they're saying that they really did go out in these cemeteries uh -huh. and dance on people's graves and chant. Oh, that's weird. 
So, you know, maybe they were witches. Maybe they thought they were witches. Maybe they wanted to be witches. I don't know, but they were. Sounds like they were evil at the very least. They were very, very evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, good story. Well, thank you very much. And, folks, that's the story of the Three Sisters, another bit of the folklore and the history of this place we call home. Thanks for listening. Now, be sure to subscribe to the Mountain Lore Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Till next time, sweet dreams, podcast listeners. <laughs>